Hey friends, Ash here with Ten Cents. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about seven fragrances that were really anticipated, really hyped. People were pumped for them until they came out and then they were disappointed. It's like that time your dad went to go get cigarettes and never came back. Hmm. Yeah, we've all been there. So these are fragrances that let everyone down and who doesn't love being let down? for the 1200th time in their lives. <laughs> so let's jump into it. Let's talk about some fragrances that uh, were highly anticipated until people smelled them. Now this first one's pretty unique because this one was supposed to, at least the way that everybody found out about it, it was supposed to be a flanker of an existing cult favorite in the fragrance community that had a fantastic presentation. And the pictures of this fragrance, the presentation looked sick. Everybody was pumped. They were like, yes, yes. They're expanding on this line. Can't wait to see where it goes until the fragrance house killed the original fragrance, discontinued it, and then changed up the whole presentation of this and put it out in one of the plainest, just most bland, forgettable bottles of all time. It's Van Cleef & Arpels in New York. Now, originally, everybody found out about this as being midnight in New York. It was supposed to be a flanker to midnight in Paris. And you can still find pictures of the midnight in New York bottle, at least the mock-up of it online. There it is. That looks pretty cool. This is just a plain square bottle with a gray gradient and it's the most forgettable thing you're ever gonna see. Now the fragrance itself does not smell terrible, but it's definitely not on par with Midnight in Paris. Midnight in Paris, like I said, cult favorite. Lots of people love it. I mean, a lot of people dislike it too, to be fair, but it was unique. This is a little bit Gucci Guilty-ish. So it's gonna be in that style. And of course, Gucci Guilty, a lot of people love to play or hate on. So what do you think happened here? Yeah. They changed the bottle, they changed the name, they killed the fragrance that everybody really enjoyed, especially because it was only $20 at discounters, but uh, neither here nor there. And then they come out with this Gucci Guilty-ish in New York. Went over about as well as a lead balloon. Now, in all fairness, that fragrance, pick it up for not that much money from a discounter nowadays. It's a really serviceable, day-to-day, -day versatile fragrance. It's office safe and uh, it's it's really likable, you know? It, it's maybe not the most unique thing on earth, but it's not terrible. But the way that that came to be is definitely terrible and it did not, not live up to the hype. Midnight in New York, we never knew you. And you know who never lets you down? The Peace Mode Gents. Yes, you knew it, you knew it. These fine fellows right here. Thank you for supporting the channel. Shout out to all of you guys. Appreciate it so much. If you want to join the ranks of the Beast Mode gents, hit the join button below. Check out the membership program. Check out the perks. If for some reason you don't see a join button below, there's a link in the description. You can click that little link. It'll take you to the same place. So again, shout out guys. Thank you so much. Back to the video. Next up, Paco Rabanne Invictus Aqua 2018. So why this one? Why is this? anticipated and why is it a letdown? Well, if you were around back when Invictus Aqua originally came out in 2016, you'll know that that fragrance caught hype. People were all about Invictus Aqua. Everybody was talking about it, saying this is one of the best summer fragrances. This is one of the best compliment pullers, super versatile. Everyone loves it. So of course, Paco Rabanne discontinued it. That's, that's big brain. And then Paco Rabanne brought it back in 2018. Yeah, capitalize. Oh, you missed that fragrance. Well, turns out it's coming out again. Let me see your pocketbook. And then what happened was YouTube and every place people talk about fragrances was flooded with people comparing the original 2016 to the 2018 version of Invictus Aqua. What did people find out? They changed it. Maybe not an enormous change from the original to 2018, but they definitely did change it. And most people agree it was for the worse. 
So of course, what happens when you take a fragrance that is heavily hyped, that people are super pumped for you to bring back, and then you bring it back and it's not as good, people are let down. Invictus Aqua 2018, I think, is one of the most obvious examples of people highly anticipating something, only to have the perfume company walk up to you and be like, hey, you like that? <laughs> Spit in your face. Oh, and also, thank you for buying it again, even though it's worse, idiot. That's Paco Rabanne speaking, not me. And while we're talking about Invictus, <laughs> why don't we talk about a flanker to a really loved fragrance line that uh, maybe didn't capture the name of the fragrance line the way people were hoping. Yeah, Spice Bomb Night Vision. Eau de Toilette. Apple Tonka Pepper Cardamom in this fragrance right here. So this followed up the very successful Spice Bomb, Spice Bomb Extreme, and to a lesser extent, Spice Bomb Old Fresh. And when it was announced that a new Spice Bomb Flinker was coming out, people were hyped because Spice Bomb is a line that a lot of people love, especially for those cooler months. Big time performance, big time compliment factor. What's not to love? So Spice Bomb Night Vision was announced. It's got this slick gradient where it's kind of a fluorescent neon green at the bottom and goes up to black at the top. People were, people were hyped. How is this one gonna smell? Then Spice Bomb Night Vision came out. People were pumped. They ordered it online immediately, full retail, got it in, sprayed it on, gave it a whiff, and realized that smells like Invictus. Yeah, Paco Rabanne Invictus got you again. It did with Night Vision Eau de Toilette. I can't even tell you guys how many different fragrances have come out over the years that have an Invictus style DNA where it doesn't smell exactly like Invictus, but you can tell Invictus has been there. Yeah, that's what Spice Bomb Night Vision is. So imagine how let down so many people were when they bought that, expecting something like Spice Bomb Extreme. It's it's over there. Or the original Spice Bomb, you know, something like that with a twist modernized. That's what people were hoping for. Instead, would you like some Invictus? Uh, no, actually, I wouldn't. Next up, we've got one from a line of fragrances that at one point was heralded as, as being one of the tops in the designer realm. People really, really waited with anticipation for the next release in this line. And nowadays, uh, the line is it's like half dead fragrance is amen ultimate so it used to be mugler would come out with a new amen every year it would be centered around a different note or idea so we had pure coffee pure leather pure malt pure haban pure shot yeah that one didn't work out so good just a real quick history lesson on that fragrance in case you're unaware <laughs> The face of the fragrance, Pure Shot, was Oscar Pistorius, the uh, Blade Runner. He was a Paralympian and then an Olympian, also a sprinter, who shot and killed his uh, girlfriend. Yeah. So you can imagine how well that went over. Hey guys, here's the new spokesperson for our fragrance, Pure Shot, a murderer. Oh shit, <laughs> let's change that. So they changed it to pure energy. I'll just leave it there. Anyway, yeah, they had all those fragrances. Some of them were really good. And, and then they came out with Amen Ultimate. So people were really excited to get a new addition to the Amen line. They're like, oh yeah, baby. Pure Havan, pure Malt, those are classics. I'll take another. Cappuccino, some woody notes, bit of citrus in here. It it doesn't smell bad. It's, it's completely decent. Now, the problem with it is it can't hold a candle to the best releases in the line. So this is one of those fragrances where it was released into a line that already has some really monstrous scents and it just can't stack up to those. And it comes across kind of like a, uh, maybe a slightly more modern version of Rojas Man or something like that. The difference is that one is way cheaper than this one. So it's kind of, you know, kind of pointless. You could pay a lot more money and get the bottle that's kind of cool and blue, but ultimately the scent profile is pretty close. 
and it just fell by the wayside with the quickness. That is one that did not catch on. People weren't feeling it. Now this next one's a little divisive. I actually liked this a lot when it came out, but a bunch of people didn't. It seemed to be like 50-50. Uh, and a lot of people were saying, this house has lost its way. The, the days of old were when it really rocked. Nowadays, it's just fragrances, homage, sunshine men. So this one, as I said, a lot of people were saying, no, take me back to the days of old homage where I'm getting stuff like jubilation, interlude, memoir. That's what I want. This, this stupid sunshine man with lavender and tonka. Oh, disgusting. And I love it. I'm a big fan of lavender and uh, that's in pretty much all shapes and forms. I really like it. And in here, it smells great. It is a bit sweet. You got a little bit of booziness in here. You got a vanilla and Tonka combination. So it really is to an extent like an overloaded sweet lavender. And um, maybe to you that doesn't scream sunshine because you're thinking of something citrusy fresh. But for me, I thought it was really cool. It's wearable, it's, it's definitely potent. It's got good quality. But uh, a lot of people dunked on that one and were let down. So, and you can still go back and read a lot of those reviews from when this came out. People lashed it, did not like it. Now this next one, this is a blue fragrance. And with blue fragrances, especially when it's the start of a new line, of blue fragrances, people will usually stand up and take notice if it's from a house that's pretty well known. And this one definitely is. Now on top of that, you know, you've got the hype from people saying, ooh, something new versatile, something new compliment pool, something new everybody like. You've got those people. And then you throw in on top, oh, and, and who is the perfumer? One Francis Kirkshawn. I know what you're thinking to yourself. That's the guy who did Miracle Ohm by L'Enfant. And you're right. He also did some stuff that nobody cares about, like Baccarat Rouge 540 and Le Mans or something like that. It, who even knows what that is? That was sarcasm. Just, that was sarcasm. So, this one came out. Mr. Burberry, Eau de Toilette. And people were not impressed. It's got grapefruit, cardamom, woodsy notes, including vetiver and tarragon. And some of the notes in the scent. Now, to be fair to Mr. Burberry, I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say it is. I think that it does have that blue fragrance versatility, but it's a little bit more mature smelling than some of the blue scents out there, the vast majority, actually. And that's because it doesn't bash you over the head with sweetness. It's, it's more aromatic. So I actually think you pick that up for a pretty good price. It's fine, completely usable, inoffensive, smells nice, and it's a good departure from a lot of other blue scents. But that is obviously the minority because a lot of people love to hate on that. And it's pretty, pretty safe to say it did not reach the expectations a lot of people had for it. Now, a lot of these are really not bad fragrances at all. I actually think Mr. Burberry is fine. In New York, it's fine. Sunshine is good. And Amen Ultimate, it's fine. You just have to know what you're getting. And a lot of people were hoping for more than what they are. This last one though, I think sucks. It's not good. So now it's time for me to be the hater. <laughs> it's wanted tonic and it's not worth it. And when I say it, I mean any dollar amount. How much did I pay for it? Oh man, about a hundred dollars. Maybe more actually. I bought it full retail and had it shipped over from Europe. That wasn't smart. I got lime, ginger, and patchouli. Now, the scent itself is completely inoffensive. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little spritz of Rooney right here. Or three. I'm completely inoffensive. Here's the problem I have with the fragrance. This came after Wanted by Night, which I think is really good. It's a very unique fragrance, and for the price at discounters, it is great. They announced Wanted Tonic, summertime version of Wanted, and I thought, cool, 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 cool. Maybe they're gonna do something unique, a little twist here or there, something to capture the attention. No, it's just, it's a really basic, bare bones, 
summertime shower gel kind of scent. It smells like the type of fragrance that should be a summer release done for, I don't know, I could tell you probably 15 different lines that you could throw that into a summer release of and it would work as a fragrance that people buy at TJ Maxx for $15. Look guys, it's Tommy Hilfiger Summer 2021. Look guys, it's CK1 Summer 2021. Look guys, it's Cesaro Chrome Summer 2021. Look guys, it's Isimiyake Low DC Summer 2021. That's what this is. It's uh... That's, yeah, that's all I got. I was just really, 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 really let down by that one. Um, again, not because it's an unpleasant smell, just because there's not much to it. And I paid over $100 for it like a moron. Now, if you pay $40 or $45 for it, you'll probably still think, yeah, that's, that's not worth it. 2025, I give it a pass at that. There we go, highly anticipated fragrances that were not good. Thumbs down. Or actually, not all of them were thumbs down, but that's what the vast majority of people said, thumbs down. All right, guys, let me know in the comments, what are some of the fragrances you anticipated, that you were pumped for, and that you were let down by? All right, guys, that's gotta do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.